Thank you for joining us on the Overcomers Overcoming podcast series, where we profile those who have overcome or those who are in the process of overcoming any life topic. We have three objectives with this podcast series. Our first objective is we want you to know that whatever you're experiencing in life, whatever you're encountering, you're not alone. We want to enjoin you to let you know that we together can help you through whatever challenge you may have that at the time may seem too difficult to be able to overcome. Our second objective is to help you determine with a very confident resolve, there are multiple solutions, multiple factors involved in any life encounter. It's a matter of thinking into and thinking through the life situation you are encountering to determine the various options, the various solutions that are available to you. Our third objective is to help you with critical thinking skills. If whatever you're experiencing is a result of a decision you made sometime in the past, such that if you had a life redo, you would make a different decision, we want to help you determine the objective facts and factors to evaluate to help you reach a more informed decision. I'm Ron Cooper, founder of the Cooper Culture. I'm with my wife and business partner, Marty. Together, we are the Cooper Culture, and the Cooper Culture is sponsoring this podcast series. Today, we feature Eric Kuhn for our seventh episode, where we continue our discussion of a disciplined financial future and disciplining ourselves to work toward and think about the future. Today, we talk some more detail about compounding, but it's in the context of mutual funds, index funds, just some of the investment opportunities that exist. Some of the details can be daunting, overwhelming. For those who are very knowledgeable of the market, these terms can be very familiar, but to some, it can be daunting, overwhelming, and just too much to work. But Marty, what are some takeaways our listeners can gain from this podcast? Like you said, Ron, it is overwhelming to me. So I totally depend on you and our finances, knowing that you are a lot smarter in this. You understand it a lot more than I do, but I do know that it takes discipline and that discipline I see in you and that puts confidence in me, our finances are in line. Thank you, Marty. And there is an amount of discipline required in spending, investing, and putting it all together. And if at any time the outgo is more than the income, we know what the future is going to hold. You will not have the choices that we want for you to have. Let's listen together and learn some more about discipline finances from Eric. Eric, thank you so much for joining us for our seventh episode. For our listeners who may be joining us for the first time, I'm with Eric Kuhn, a financial planner. We are discussing in depth the full comprehensive aspect of money. It is a matter of, in some cases, us learning about money. It may be a matter also of overcoming any myths that we may have. It may be a matter of overcoming any attitudes we may have toward money. Eric, we have discussed it before, but Zig Ziglar once said, money may not be the most important thing you can have in life, but it's pretty close to oxygen. We have to have it. Using that analogy, that quote, We need money to be able to retire. We need money to be able to do what we want to do. And it is uh, for Marty and me, it is a matter of choices. But Eric, thank you for helping to dispel some of the myths, helping to educate us about money. Our last episode was about compounding. Let's take this, Eric, uh, wherever this conversation best leads to help our listeners to make what I call informed decisions about our future regarding investing and our money. Thank you, Val, once again, for allowing me to speak with your audience today. Money situation and everything we're doing today is very important, not only our country, but where we have our money and and what we're doing with our money is extremely important at, at any time. But today, I think even more so due to the hyperinflation that this country is in right now. So we're going to backtrack a little bit. 
I want to talk about that wealth equation again, just briefly kind of bring people up to speed what that wealth equation really is, the two things that are most important in efficiently having a financial vehicle that's going to produce what you need it to produce. Uh, it needs to have uninterrupted compounding and unhindered control. Those two things are huge because obviously if, if you can control your money and grow your money at a rate that is much greater than 6%, say right now that the inflation rates at 6%, we need to be able to have vehicles that we are putting money in. That's for our retirement in a lot of cases. It may not be the money you need tomorrow to go to the grocery store, but it is definitely the money you need to retire with, money you need to have for your future. And so when we get into talking about Unin uninterrupted compounding and unhindered control, you need to have a vehicle that's going to have characteristics. These characteristics are, are very important. And if you've got, you got to really kind of take these down. If I tell my audience, write them down and then check out your own accounts. Are, is your account safe? Is it liquid? Does it have growth? Is it, is it leveraging? Are you leveraging your money with, with what you have? Is it inflation protected? That's a big one. Does it have any guarantees, like a guarantee of three or four percent? That may not be enough to cover the uh, the inflation rate, but certainly in a bad time, if the if the markets crash or we have a, a downturn in those markets, are you gaining at least something, three or four percent, something that's guaranteed? Are you going to be free of fees, free of regulation, flexible? requires minimal time, passive cash flow, private, protected, tax deductible, tax-free growth, and tax-free distributions. So these are things that you need to consider in your, if you write these things down, or I've got to just explain, these are characteristics of a vehicle that will do very well and will get you through those hard times as well as the good times. So you're going to have, because you know everything goes up and down, everything's a cycle. We have a cycle sometimes where we have years of prosperity and we have low taxes and we have low inflation and we're just doing great. Then we have times where, boom, it's pendulum goes the other way. And now we're into a place of high inflation, higher taxes. I mean, for God's sake, they, they're talking about the IRS just talked about it uh, or the uh, government's talked about the IRS wants to have every one of these accounts that comes from Zelle or from PayPal, Venmo. And these accounts, they want anything over $600 in a year that you receive money from is going to be reported to the IRS. So that's $600 in a year. That's not even in a month. So they're going to be, I mean, the everyday person is going to be scrutinized by these companies reporting to the IRS when you get money from Venmo or from Zelle or from, or from uh, PayPal, you're going to be scrutinized on that money again. Here we go. And this is this is called, you know, this is the the tax man cometh, so to speak. People need to pay attention. People need to really pay attention to what's happening. And we need to do the best we can to protect your money by placing it into places which can obviously give us those, some of those characteristics I just talked about. No, that's good, Eric. And thank you for that. What came to mind, tell me if I'm thinking correctly. I seem to recall sometime in the past uh, what's known as the rule of 72. And what I'm trying yes. to relate to is what if 6% inflation were to continue, how long would it take for, let's just say, a $3 per gallon gasoline price? To, how long would it take to double? If I'm thinking correctly, the rule of 72 says the, the current interest rate, 6% divided into 72, a good rule of thumb would be in 12 years, that $3 per gallon gasoline is going to cost us uh, $6. And so to me, that's just a, oh my gosh, a wow factor. And I'm not here to say the 6% is going to continue for the next 12 years, but it's just how that inflation can eat away at our earnings. And we may feel good that we're doing well, but just know that the cost of goods continues to increase. So, Eric, that's just a thought, you know, novice like me is uh, trying to put this in a perspective that, man, inflation, I hear about it, but what is it? And uh, so that's just uh, one thought. 
you're spot on. Uh, the role of 72, again, one of those wonderful creations that came out. Um, Albert Einstein, I believe, came up with that role of 72. Yes, that's uh, that's one of those wonderful things that he came up with that says, hey, yeah, you divide that interest, and it can, but it can go the other way. It's not just about that, but but if you can also look at when, how much can I double? So if I could take 8%, divide that into 72, how many years at 8% will it take to double my money? Okay, so not only can it go on the negative side as far as inflation goes, well, you know, inflation could double in 12 years or, you know, eat away at my at my portfolio over that amount of time. But if you were earning a eight or 10% intra, a rate of return, for example, now the combination, now you actually have a gain of 4%. If you want to look at that way, and, you know, you take 72 divided by four, and that's 18 years, okay, to double your money. So if you have a high inflation rate of 6% is what I'm saying, and then, but you are able to find a vehicle that's going to produce you somewhere around 10% return. Now you are ahead of the game by 4%. And that means in 18 years, if it stays the same, which we know inflationary is a very volatile, very volatile number. It goes up and down. Uh, currently we're tra- trending up because we're spending so much money. We're printing so much money due to this whole COVID thing and this whole you know, we got we to gotta spend our money out. We got to spend our way out of this. It is actually the wrong concept. We shouldn't be spending our way out of this. If we were smart and didn't do that and allowed things to happen naturally, naturally, it would, people would do the things that are necessary. Businesses would find a way. They always have. But we actually have to stick our little finger in there and say, hey, we're going to make this do this. You know, when we do that as a as a as a country and as a uh, you know, as a government, even, we, you know, this is what we're going to come up against. We're going to have these kinds of things happening. And all of a sudden, hey, now the price of uh, beef is up 25 percent. I mean, I mean, I went to the store the other day. I mean, it's crazy. Everything I look across the board is up everything, you know, and I, and I pretty much do most of the shopping. So I know <laughs> when it comes to the grocery shopping. So. Uh, you know, if, and when you go to the gas pump, it's up a dollar fifty or more. You know, I mean, come on, really? I mean, how long can we continue to do this? And it just means that everybody's going to pull back. That's what's going to happen. People will stop spending, and that actually affects the total economy because now people are stop spending because all of a sudden they're freaking out, saying, "Well, forget that. I'm not going to travel anywhere." So I guess what that's going to do? It means that people aren't going to fill up their tanks as much. That means that maybe they're not, when they go to the grocery store, they're not going to spend and splurge on anything. They're going to buy the just bare necessities, get by. They're not going to spend as much. That also affects everything, affects, affects the whole growth of our economy. Okay. And you can't keep doing this. This is, this is really a catastrophe waiting to happen if we aren't careful. Every time they want to talk about spending more money, remember, it's going to affect you and me differently a lot of cases than the person who has, who's a billionaire. Person who's a billionaire can get through this with no problem. The everyday person who's making 40, 50, a hundred grand a year, it's going to affect them a totally different way. Very well said, Eric. And thank you for adding the positive side of the rule of 72 that yes, if I have an investment vehicle that is earning 9%, in eight years, I'll be able to double my money, just as a rough rule of thumb. But then also I'm thinking, Eric, as you just explained, downside of spending, it's just a natural occurrence that we on the spending side are going to not spend on the luxury items. In other words, if I wanted a swimming pool, those things that are not absolutely essential to life, we're not going to be spending on those things because I don't have the money. Yes, beef. Well, uh, beef prices are going way up. We will adjust as necessary. So what I'm saying is that some people are going to go out of business. The luxury items, uh, we are likely going to put some of those people out of business because uh, we can no longer afford those luxury items. So our economy makes adjustments. So Eric, I don't want to take you off topic, but just some of the thoughts that come to mind because I like it when you stimulate my thinking. Well, that's... uh... What I'm here to do, I hope. Let's talk a little bit about some of the vehicles that are out there that people put money into. Everybody knows they put the money into the bank account. Everybody puts money in their savings account or their checking account. 
or a money market account. Those things, of course, obviously are not giving you an interest that's competitive. Money market accounts, you're lucky to get that one and a half percent. That's not even competing with the inflation rate of 6%. That's just one vehicle. Now, let's talk about some of the other things. Where are people put their money? Well, let's, especially for retirement purposes. They are placing their money in a 401k, or maybe they have it with an Ameritrade account, or maybe they have it in mutual funds through any one of these other companies out there that, that, that do mutual funds. But a lot of people don't realize that there's another there's another fund out there that people don't think about a lot. And I actually work in this this um, these funds a lot because they're called index funds. The index fund is an interesting vehicle because what it does is it takes the the stocks and bonds and securities that people invest in in the mutual fund, but your money's not directly in placed in that fund. Okay, it's not directly placed with the stock. Normally, these insurance carriers that I work through have it set up to where these funds mimic the market, but they don't invest in the market. So they create their own indices, so to speak, that say, okay, we can go ahead and take your money, and this is how we can guarantee you a much better rate of return more consistently than a mutual fund. Mutual funds are going to have higher fees. They're going to have management fee ratios or comparing the two is, is totally different. So when I looked and I compared the index fund to a mutual fund, basically what the index fund does is matches the investment returns on the benchmark of the stock market, say the index, the S&P 500. It matches, it mimics, where the mutual fund is actually investing directly in those stocks. Their idea on a mutual fund is to beat, to beat the investment returns. They're trying to manage it such that your money, they're placing your money into certain companies. How risky do you want to be with your money? Everybody is risk averse in different places. Nobody's the same. Everybody's different. And that's why I keep telling people, you have to understand where are you? There's so many people out there, Ron, today. There's so many advertisements out there today that they're trying to get the younger people to invest their money into cryptocurrencies, for example. Nothing wrong with that, except for understand you are in a high risk situation. Yeah, you could make a lot of money, but you can see how quickly the cryptocurrencies dropped over a course of just a couple of days. It can go from a Bitcoin 60,000 or $70,000 down to $40,000 in just a matter of a week. You can lose quite a bit if you aren't managing it yourself. You have to be willing to manage these things yourself. And now there's some other there's some other ones out there that I noticed on commercials that talked about ones that you can put your money into and allows you to invest in stocks. So some of these people are, I know some of these younger people will, and they use the younger people because they go, hey, take $100, put it in these stocks, put another $100 in the stocks. You've got to manage those. If you aren't managing those on a daily basis and watching what's going on, you could lose every bit that you put in. You've got to be a good manager and you've got to be no one to pull out, no one to put back in. That can be a challenge for a lot of people because, first of all, they may not understand stocks the way they need to. And they're just and they're just putting their money thinking they're going to, you know, the get rich quick. Let me put $100 in the stocks and, and hey, I'm going to make 100 grand like in a week. It's just not realistic. In many cases, most people lose money don't make money in stocks. Just, just generally speaking, that's just the truth. Most people do not make money. They usually lose money. It comes to an index fund versus a mutual fund, again, management styles. Index funds are passive. The investment mix is automated to match the exact holdings of the benchmark index. To get that, it's mixed, automated to match the exact holdings of the benchmark index, it's passive. So it's a little bit better in the way that if you're not the kind of person that wants to track your stuff daily and be in there and just like track and track and track and move over there and move over here, go over this way, pull this money out, invest over here in this. If you're not willing to do that, sometimes these index funds are a much better situation because it's more passive. It's a little more conservative. You're going to put your money in. You don't have to be behind the computer screen every day watching it. Mutual funds are active, stockpilers, fund managers, analysts, choose fund holdings. These are the things that you have and the differences between those two. The average management fees on a, an index fund is 0.09% management fee for an index fund. 
Do you know the mutual funds are 0.82%? Almost 1% is management fees from these mutual funds, paying these, these uh, managers to manage your account. So when you get down to it, write down what that means is this. If you invested $1,000 for 30 years at a 7% return in an index fund, you would have about 100 grand in 30 years. At $1,000 after fee return, after a fee return of $1,000, annual investment earning 7% average re return over 30 years would be almost 100 grand. If you did the same thing in a mutual fund, it's $86,000. So it's a $14,000 difference. The amount lost in fees, and this is important because a lot of these fee-based places where they say you should be with a fee-based investor, amount lost in fees over 30 years with an index fund is $1,800. That's not terrible because it's $1,800 over 30 years. Mutual funds is $15,000 is what would be lost on that $1,000 investment you would lose 15 grand because of fees alone. When it gets down to it, when you're trying to decide what is a good place for me to go, understand I'm not telling people what to do. I'm just saying you need to wrap your head around, am I willing to be active? Am I willing to be watching my money? Am I willing to make those investments? And some people love it and they just, they get into it and they're really, and they can do very well. But if you're not one of those people, don't have the time, I'm working, I don't have the time to really manage this stuff and I really don't want to, then maybe you need to look at an index fund, which is more passive. Very well said, Eric. To the listener who may be thinking, wow, I did, this is just a bunch of stuff. It's all very interesting and it's all necessary. I am not the kind of person who daily wants to be manipulating or involved in the stock market. I do want to do what's prudent, and you mentioned risk tolerance. I am uh, wherever I am on the risk tolerance part. Is it a matter, Eric, of you determining who we are, what our objectives are, and setting up a portfolio that is designed very specifically for us? In other words, the portfolio that I want may not be the same as what my neighbor needs, those kinds of things. But it, do you provide a service where you tailor everything to the individual's needs, risk tolerance, and so forth? Because Man, you've talked about a bunch of stuff, but I'm not sure I am conversant enough to be able to make informed decisions. You may have two major considerations at this point in this podcast. One can be you've stimulated my thinking. I now have more ideas. I know how to go about my financial future. The second possibility is I just feel overwhelmed with the number of facts, of the number of options, not sure where to go. If you're the type that has had your thinking stimulated, I hope you're able to move forward and put together a very good plan on your own. If you're the kind of person who says, just too many details, too many things to consider, I need help, I hope you'll consider calling Eric or any other financial planner to work through the details, but the future is coming. I want for you to have the choices that you would like to have so that you're not strapped a limited number of choices because of a lack of finances. Yes, you definitely should sit down with somebody who can do that for you to try to look and build a portfolio that's going to fit your need. Again, one that's flexible. That's the other thing. Sometimes some of these vehicles will limit how much money you can put in them too. So you have those kind of things as well. So all of these things we need to talk about when we sit down and talk with someone we need to map it out. We need to build a plan that's going to fit you and what your desires are. If you desire a little more risk, that's totally up to you. I'm not going to sway you one way or the other. That's what you'd like to do. That's fine. If you want to have a little more, a uh, little more control, a little bit more unhindered compounding, and able to control your money a little bit more, maybe a little more on the passive side, we have vehicles that are going to help you with that as well. Well, Eric, thank you. And for the listener who wants to contact you, can you tell us how we can do that and maybe work in person over the phone or however you do business? Yes, you reach me here at lnefinancialservices.net. That's ecoon, E-C-O-O-N, 
at lefinancialservices.net. That's my personal email. Our website, lefinancialservices.net is the website, www, whatever dot, and then that. You can also reach us at our phone number, 443-975-7522. And you can reach out to me. I always say the best way, usually a lot of times is just to email me. If you would like to speak to me in a little more depth, I'd be more happy to schedule a time with you to talk about your concerns and uh, go from there. I appreciate that, Ron. Thank you, Eric. And can I do business with you virtually or do we need to be in person? Uh, how do you operate? We can do either one. I work both ways. So if you prefer to be virtual due to the current COVID situation, whatever, and you prefer that way, we can certainly do the Zoom meeting as well. And we can have that conversation. Well, Eric, thank you. You have provided a lot of information, everything that the many factors that need to be considered in having a, a balanced portfolio and one that fits our particular risk tolerance to take us to where we need to be, where our financial goals are for the future. I want to thank you for helping us work through the myriad details because many of us are just involved and in we're quite honestly, we are prioritized in a lot of today's events and future is coming and future is going to take some amount of money. If we don't plan for the future, it will come up and we will not have the choices we might like to have, but we have to make those choices now to have the choices in the future. So have I characterized accurately a financial future? Yes, yes, you have. Thank you very much. On behalf of our listeners, we look forward to continuing this conversation to tailor a portfolio to our specific needs. I'm curious to know, do you feel stimulated to a call to action? Do you feel empowered to take action regarding your financial future? Possibly. If you already have a good plan, but it just needs to be reviewed, I want to encourage you to do that. Look into whatever plans you have to make sure that they are current with your desires for the future. They are compliant with state and local statutes and federal mandates that are available to you. I would hope through this call to action, you feel that you want to do what you need to do to take action for your financial future. There are some of us who feel that we're just overwhelmed with the facts, the information. We feel overwhelmed with different things we're doing in the present. You may feel that I just not even sure I have the time to devote to this. I want to encourage you to do whatever you need to do to get with the financial planner to develop a financial plan that is tailored to your needs. Do you have insurance? Have you taken care of the factors that could be prevalent in your life? One thing we can't plan on is a medical emergency. There are homeowner emergencies, could be automobile, any of these kinds of things that can quasi plan for. In other words, we have a contingency fund for an amount of factors that represent emergencies. But it's a matter of planning for this. These kind of things don't happen simply by happenstance, but rather it is a result of intentional thinking. We're looking into our financial future. We are putting into practice and the call to action is we are planning for the future. We have discussed risk tolerance and you need to know what your risk tolerance is. You may not be tolerant of variations in uh, market fluctuations. We're in a period of inflation. That is a tax that is not directly applied to us in the form of a tax, but it is a tax in the context of increased cost of goods and services. And those are things that we need to plan for. So in the context of long range planning, there are assumptions you need to make, you need to include, as we mentioned, your risk tolerance. Those are the things that need to be considered as you are developing a financial plan that is very specifically tailored to you. I want to encourage you that uh, talking with a friend across the desk who has you know, some amount of thoughts, they may or may not be accurate, they may or may not be what is best suited for you. I want to encourage you to 
get with a financial planner if you're not already working with one who can put a plan together that is tailored very specifically to your needs. I hope you will want to share this podcast with others. It is unfortunate that I have seen in my observation, there are those who are not planning for the future. I'm very dismayed at the number of people who say they have very little in savings. I know those kind of people are going to have to work longer than maybe they would want to. I do understand that in general terms, the word retirement is taking on a total different meaning. Marty and I have no desire to retire. We just want the choice to do what we want to do. And we are at that point in our life that we're doing this podcast. We have our own business. We're doing exactly what we want to do because we have planned for the future. We are at a point in our life where we have choices. No pretense in what I'm saying to you, but I just want for you to have those same choices because of the planning, the foresight you have had to move forward to do those things that are specifically tailored to you. Some people need coaching because there's just some things about their past that they need to overcome and uh, they're uncertain uh, and they may lack confidence of being able to move forward. Coaching can help people overcome anything of the past, any procrastination you may have. Marty and I are certified through the John Maxwell Enterprise. Let's schedule a 30-minute complimentary coaching session to see if we can help you overcome anything that's keeping you from living at your full potential, planning for the future, looking into those things that are best tailored to you so that you can maximize your potential. We hope also that we can warrant a five-star rating from you through this podcast. We hope you'll want to subscribe to this series. We want for you to live your full God-designed potential such that you have all the life choices that you want. We hope that you'll share this podcast with your Facebook friends, your Instagram community, your LinkedIn connections. Share with other people. Let's make the widest distribution we can because we want to work with you. We want to walk beside you. We want for you to know that there's a great future. We believe the best is yet to come. We can help you with that by walking alongside you just to make certain you know you are not alone. Contact us at ron at thecooperculture.com or marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at thecooperculture.com. Let's work together. Let's share ideas. Let's advance others by bringing others into our circle of influence to let them know we genuinely care. We look forward to working with you.